Happy 4th of July week. I'm just calling it the week. Yes, the, the week. The week of 4th of July because everybody and their brother is gone. Yes, everybody's are on gonna... vacation. People are like, you're actually open this week? And I'm like, uh, yeah, why <laughs> would I not be open? I don't understand that. So, yes, everybody's The 4th uh, of July is a win. No, Thursday this, this week, this year, right? It's Thursday. So, yeah, why would you not be yeah, why would you not be up and running? So, anyway, so we're going to talk about. Um, whoa, we got a lot to talk about because we have. Um, hey, Rod, do me a favor. Can you turn air down in the studio, a please? Thank you, buddy. Um, Kate, we're going to talk about the the uh, the end of Windows Seven, basically. Yes. And then we're going to talk about the update that's just how happening that. Wow. Can really mess everything up. <laughs> um, I have a ton of emails that are asking me about video that I could have swore that we. Um, I mean, I'm glad people are emailing, but they, they're they're wanting to know so I uh, uh, different types of cameras and stuff. Right. So, um, but let's talk about let's do a doom and gloom first, man. The end of Windows Seven. Windows Seven, yes. Uh, the end of uh, Windows Seven. Now that's been over uh, over ten years since it was uh, made, and uh, June 14th, 2020, is going to be the end of uh, Windows uh, 7, at least in matter of, you know, they're, when Microsoft is no longer going to support it. They're not going to be doing any more uh, patching. If they find any security vulnerabilities in the operating system, they're not going to be patching them. So that's, that's what that means. That doesn't mean that your operating system is going to stop working. It just means that, you know, if, if any kind of security bugs or um, issues arise, Microsoft's not going to help you. Um, so it's not going to go away. It's not like it can't be used. Right. It but but if you used. have an OEM sticker, Windows sticker, 7 sticker on your computer, you can update to 10 for free. You can still, you can still do, uh, do the upgrade at right now. But again, you know, it's now going to be a, it's not going to be an upgrade. It's going to have to be completely, you know, wiped and then. Oh, so there's no way to update it and, and. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the the, the upgrade feature um, that they did have uh, through the up the tool that's no longer utilized. Okay. But um, it can still you know you can still you know bring your machine up to Windows 10, uh, but it's it's good to go ahead and take this after time. After the 14th. After the 14th, yes. So if I've got an OEM sticker on the bottom of my. If you still have a Windows 7 machine, we could still we could still make it a, a Windows 10. Okay. Well, the you thing, can always make it a 10. Just don't, yeah. you know, you're, you're gonna it won't be an update. It'll be a wipe and start all over. Good luck, buddy. Yeah. And unfortunately, you're going to have to um, make sure that you take into account right now, you know, while this is happening, you know, the, your software packages that you're currently uh, utilizing. If you use, use uh, Office 2010, um, that same year, they're ending life on support on that also. Uh, October 13th, they're going to stop supporting Office 2010, which means that they're also going to so stop supporting it in Windows 10 obviously okay uh, they're not going to allow it to to continue to run so it's time to start evaluating you know your quickbooks versions you know all the software packages that make your business run right unless you have a custom a custom built application then it's time to start looking about upgrading your software um and, and getting getting ready for this because you know you need to know what's going to work with windows 10 what's not going to work with windows 10 Gosh forbid, you know, catastrophe happens. You got your data backed up. Now what are you going to do with it? You know, QuickBooks, for instance, if you have a version, you know, really old, like 2007, 2009, you can't just dump the newest version on it and, and migrate your data over. 
way QuickBooks works is you have to progressively upgrade your database beyond those different versions before you can get to the newest one. You can't just upgrade your, you know, your database from uh, a software package you bought 10 years ago to the newest one without having to go through some steps. Um, so it's time to start evaluating your business and your, uh, you know, where you're going to be, you know, a year from now. Right. So. Well, I mean, and it kind of makes sense. Yes. It, it, I know? mean, it does make sense. You know, you pretty soon you're not going to be able to buy any. So if the, it, with this, you know, at this time, corporations can go ahead and purchase Windows 7 machines. You can buy them from Dell Business uh, Solutions and stuff. You know, you can buy with downgrade rights to Windows 7. Right. Um, but that's gonna not going to happen because af, after, you know, after January uh, 14th, they're not going to – if Microsoft is not supporting it, then they're not going to allow it to be put on those machines. Right. Which means you're going to – you know – if you think you, you have a business account and you're going to be able to, oh, I can just order them from Dell or whatever, it's not going to happen. Right. If Microsoft ends support, then they can't buy the software assurance from uh, Microsoft anymore. There is no support on their end. It's done. So it's time to start thinking about how you're going to operate your business from this point on. Wow. Yeah. So, okay, no, so how many oh, – say, say I have 2007 QuickBooks, mm -hmm. right? I have the older version. <laughs> um, um, I have the older version. What's going to be the cost to get me caught up? That depends on what, um, where, where we're going to have to upgrade. But from. there is going to be a cost. It won't. Be yes, free. because you know, if if you have to send your database over to Intuit, you know, they have to go through the upgrade scripts each version before, oh, so or nice. you'd have to find those progressive versions, install them on your computer, upgrade the database to, you know, 2010, 2013. Once it's upgraded, then you have to upgrade it again. Um, there's there's usually a set number of years um, they'll allow an upgrade to happen. So you'll have to you'll have to do that progressively so that your way your database is con, uh, compatible with the newest version. Right. You know, you don't want to take a chance. You know, you, you're going to go out and buy, you know, oh, I'm going to buy 2019. I've seen it all too many times they buy the newest version they go to upgrade their database and it says eh, we can't do it because it's too old right you know they they haven't been able to put the additional tables and stuff in progressively they don't just take the oldest version and say hey it's new now it doesn't work that way jeez oh, yes and that and that's everything you've got that's not just oh we're, yes, we're that's, just using quickbooks no. as Quick, an example quickbooks is just an example because that's that's you know a mainstay for most small small businesses but again, you know, same situation across the board. If you have any kind of applications that you utilize in business that has a, a, a database back end, or, or, I mean, and everything has some kind of version of a database. Um, again, you know, if you've skipped out because of cost to try to uh, um, not pay the additional fees to keep the software up to date and stuff, right. you will run into problems at some point, depending on, you know, how the application's made and how they support it and stuff, you know, whether or not that data is going to import into the newest version. Um, right. And again, you'll find that the oldest version might not run on the newest software, newest operating system, and you'll run into compatibility issues. And right now I know for, uh, for a fact that uh, uh, QuickBooks 2010 um, is, I think, the oldest version that will run on uh, Windows 10, and even that has to run in some kind of a compatibility mode. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, yeah. I know there's editing software that if you're not if you're not up to date on, it won't work. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, so same same difference there. Well, um, so when uh, so that stuff you handle, right? Yes, that's you can stuff. handle for people. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll let you everybody know now that um, so if you if you've been watching if you've been watching the live stream that's on uh on the on the website, he fixed a machine that was pretty much done and made it a little badass. <laughs> and that thing is working like a champ. So yeah, it, it's, it's, if it's, t if yeah, it's time, I think it's time for people to go, yeah, let's, uh, let's get all that fixed. So yes, keep you, keep your software, keep your hardware, uh, up to date and, uh, you will be more productive. Right. Um, we've taken, we've taken businesses that, you know, running old Core 2 duos, and, and you don't right. have to get crazy with the machine. 
but it's about having the right mix of hardware and software right. and you can make yourself so much more productive um you know if you're having to stop working or reboot your computer after about an hour to two hours because you're running out of resources um, then you're working beyond the machine's capabilities and you need to you know, really think about um, upgrading. Well, there you have it, folks. It's time to – I've got people texting in about the same thing. Okay, so what other what other softwares do you know – okay, the question is what other softwares do you know of that is going to be affected by this? Uh, as of right now, it's, it's definitely um, – uh, you have off Microsoft Office uh, 2010. Um, their life cycle is ending. I wouldn't. Uh, I would go ahead and safely say 2013 is going to be uh, having issues too. Um, but as far as you know, what software, so you that's, know, top that's, of your head. There's nothing you're gonna. It, you won't know until you you start trying to either install it. So you'll have to set up a test machine and start trying to. You know, it's time to dig out those discs. If you have them and all your <laughs> software that you've installed years ago, it's time to pull them out, time to see what's compatible with Windows uh, 10 and what's not. Um, gosh forbid something happens and right. you have to make a, a, a drastic move in your business. Are you going to be able to, you know, utilize Windows 10? Right. Are you going to be able to utilize your software or is this going to be a lot more expensive than you expected? Uh, and you know? probably, yeah, and, and, I, and I tell everybody this from experience, just let you know now that, uh, grab all of your your reg codes. Yes. Your serial numbers, the emails that belong to those serial numbers. Yes. Um, and your username and passwords. Because if you do not, and you have to reinstall this stuff, and you can't find all that stuff, mm -hmm. these companies that you bought the software stuff, from, you know, five, six, seven, ten years ago, they're not going to help you. And believe it or not, if you've bought it online, um, just check your email. You know, don't think that you didn't get some kind of a software key or an activation license or anything. Check your email. That's that's your biggest thing. Go right. back, you know, search search the product name in your email. See if you can find it. Print that email. Print that information. So that way you can utilize it. You know, just because you bought it online doesn't mean you, you know, you, you're never going to be able to install it again. And, and it's the end of the world because right. your computer, you know, kicked the bucket. It doesn't work that way. You you own it. You paid for it. You own it. That's if you, you kept just, them emails. Yeah, it just go check your inbox or your you know your old emails, and you will find where you were given. Because sometimes <laughs> we don't. That's exactly what it is. A lot. Or we delete. Oh, I don't need that email, and you delete it. You're yes. like, ah, yes. okay. Exactly. Now most businesses, you know, they just uh, let their mailbox get beyond. Uh, 15,000 emails and stuff. And then they purge it. Next thing you know, oh, no. oh it's all gone. <laughs> it's all gone. So, all right. So, um, okay. So I, I experienced this, uh, this past week is we took the new update. Ah, so yes. And this new update for the PCs just literally turned our computer upside down. <laughs> Luckily you had taught us enough in here and other people have taught me enough to know that this is the things to go look for. But it was, it was, it was a big, it made a bit, I mean, it even changed the, um, the, um, the background of, um, yes, your image. login screen. Yeah. Your login screen now is, um, faded. Uh, it's, yeah. it's still it's there, light, but it's, it's like, like a light blue. Instead yeah. Of a dark it's like blue. when you're looking through, um, you're looking through like, uh, um, one of those, uh, uh, etched glass mm -hmm. that's what they've done on the, the don't like it now it's it is kind of funky but um they did add they'd also changed the charm bars for the uh uh startup and restart shutdown you look in the bottom left the the icons changed right they changed those icons oh did they really yes yeah. now that i didn't notice <laughs> they also added in a microsoft uh game bar to the operating system God. where you can get into your chat and chat with your friends and stuff um, they, they're really tying in that whole, the Microsoft ecosystem. Okay, so I have a question for you. All of this cutesy stuff that comes up when you hit your little Windows icon, right? You yes. can't do it with this one because this is a, uh, this is a Windows 8 machine. Um, probably need to update the 10 soon. <laughs> um, but doesn't that all eat up process in the back? Those applications, no, they, they don't really do anything. They do auto-update periodically. 
So your computer is calling out to the internet and looking for um, uh, updates on those particular apps. Okay. So those apps will cause like a slight slowdown in internet connectivity. Any way to turn it all off? Um, you can uninstall them. Really? Yeah, yeah. You just like say, for instance, you see when you first install Windows 10, you see all those games that are installed. Um, uh, like, I don't know, for instance, um, Candy Crush is right. one of the main ones that was installed, and right. a few others, uh, even Solitaire. Right. You just uh, go to the um, go to the app on the Start menu, um, the big square tile. Right click on it and just click uninstall. If it is physically installed in the machine, it will have an option that says uninstall and just click it. And oh, it so there's no more having to go to programs, find it through the list. You can, yeah, you uninstall. can, you, you can do it there too. But if, if you're just in that bar and you want to, you know, those, those icons are right there and you just want to get rid of those tiles, you can just literally uninstall them. And if you don't want to look at them, you can also hide those tiles. So you can right click and hide that particular tile. And clean up that start menu so it doesn't look so large as you open it. It doesn't have like two rows of tiles that it's crazy. take up too much space. Because the minute I see stuff move inside there, it means to me that I'm, my brain says, oh, those are active. Yeah. They've got to go away. No, they're, 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 they're paused. They're not doing anything right now. But they, they, will take, they will take some resources during an update if they're updating in the background. Got it. Okay. Well, all right. Well, that makes, that makes me feel a little bit, a little <laughs> bit better. Maybe. Um, anything else that that this wonderful well, software Well, the, the major the major update is um, a lot of security features in the 1903. Um, a lot of background changes in the in the system. Uh, more security, uh, better better control of um, the uh, built-in uh, Windows Defender antivirus. Um, they also gave us the opportunity to pause Windows updates for at least up to a week. So you can now push, you know, pause your Windows updates before they were, you know, there was no way to pause them in even the home versions. Right. Um, now you can pause them for, for a week. So you can keep doing that periodically. I think it's up to three times, and then they, they start to, uh, you know, have a problem with you. Um, they, also, uh, they also streamline the uh, Windows Hello pin reset experience. So now you can, you know, change the way if you have a pin number set up uh, in your Windows uh, sign on. You know, right. There's, there's an easier way to uh, uh, fix that issue. Um, they also allow remote desktop with biometrics uh, in the pro version, um, so you can, you know, log in through with biometric. Yeah, print, I know. Stuff like print. that on Ooh. remote desktop, which is pretty. Give cool. my eye, please. So that that's a pretty cool feature because you know, hey, you know, you, you, you remote desktop is you're you're logging into the computer over the internet from another location. Now to be able to utilize, um, you know, biometrics that way, that just makes it even more secure because your password's not really being, imp you know, sent anywhere, you know, now total well, encryption. I, I like Google Desktop. Do you? Yeah, yeah, it works good for me. Yeah. Anything I don't have to pay for, <laughs> just one less bill I have to pay. You know, it's a, it just, that's kind of, that's what... I know it sounds Alan, dumb. Alan but... says whispers switch to switch to Apple. What's that? <laughs> Alan says uh, uh, whispers switch to Apple. <laughs> well, the probably. Just remember, um, Microsoft is a software company. They they want their software on all the all the machines, as many machines as possible. So that's why the specifications for Windows operating system are so low. You know. A minimum of a one gig processor, uh, a minimum of four gigs of RAM on a 64-bit version, and a minimum of a, a 20 gig, 20 to 40 gig hard drive on the operating system. They don't, they don't want to, you know, make it just for the mainstream high-end PCs. They want everybody to have it. They want volume. They, they just, they want to put it everywhere. They want to stick it on your phone. They want to. Stick it in your fridge. They want to put it wherever they can put it, and they're right. they're going to. They mean, look at the Xbox. You know, yeah. Look at look at every everything is going to be you know Windows. They need it everywhere. Apple, on the other hand, is a hardware company. They give away their operating system for free, and the the way it works is they create hardware. If you don't buy the newest, latest, greatest Apple product, or you know 
laptop or mm -hmm. you know their their iMac for instance, right, right. then they're not making any money. Oh. You know, so they're so not happy. They're not happy. If you if the, if your unit has a five year lifespan, just think if if you had people coming into your store, you know, you owned a grocery store and they didn't shop with you except for once every five years. That's that's bad. Yeah. You know, the, I mean, wh that's how are why you they make grow? cars like pieces of crap today? <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, there, there's I mean, you get a car from the 1970s and 1960s that 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 bad boy is still in good shape. Mm -hmm. You just got to tweak a little bit here and there today. Oh, no. That car, if a car lasts more than four or five years, you've done good. I mean, you've got a yeah. big life out of that bad boy. And that's why Apple does what they do. When they give that operating system, the iOS, away for free, yep. they build into it more resources that are needed to make the operating systems do more. And because of that, your unit feels slower. You know, if you reverted it back to its original operating system that it came with, it would feel fast again. Screaming fast. Right. But as they progressively build out the operating system, they push the update, and you guys are like, hey, let's go ahead and put iOS you know, 12 on, 13. And then your phone's feeling sluggish, and things are happening. That's because the, the, the operating system's more resource-intensive. It needs better, faster hardware to run. You know? Yeah, even our own, or even our own uh, switching software that we have here, um, we upgraded to the new 22, which is a great version. And but the problem is, is my machine's not built for it. Right. So now we had to put a new video card in. We're probably going to wind up putting more RAM in now, mm -hmm. just to get some more. Um, it is an i7 newer gen, so I think we're good out there processing. That's fine. It's just, uh, and then we had to switch to an SSD hard drive right. for our operating system, so it would work um, better. We did find out that um, good old uh, Adobe. Uh, hides files on the C drive. Oh, great! Without you know, you know, without telling you, it, it caches its own. Even though you're caching it into your work project folders, yes, it caches more on its own. And the and it just and I kept looking at going. It's telling me out of a terabyte hard drive, I've only got 250 gigs left, and I'm like, where is every? Where, where is all this video <laughs> at? And I ultimately <clears throat> had to download a. Um, I downloaded a, a uh, an app on there that it's called Tree Life or something like that that literally goes and traces where all your stuff is. And there in the Adobe folder set 450 gigs wow. of video on my hard drive hard drive. I'm like, no, this can't happen. So the, uh, are these these projects that you've worked on prior, and previous? For, for instance, the life of the machine. So if you take the data off of it or are done with the project, it doesn't, doesn't automatically It doesn't, doesn't oh affect because it's all the old projects, right? So <laughs> we went in there and cleaned it up, and it's like, holy crap. The computer became like it was when we first built it. It was yeah. amazing that it was like, oh, hey, I can think now. Yeah, and it's crazy. Um, Steam was that way, too. They had a, um, a software pack called, I, f right. I think it was called... Uh, Obi Wan, um, I forgot the full name of the software, but you could install it, and it would be able to um, uh, clean up the cached files right. for it. And, and it, it to me, that's dumb. Yeah, it is. Why are you doing this to me? Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, I get it. It makes our software kind of run a little bit faster, less rendering time. We, you know, you can look at stuff in live time. But the files that was in there, I went and checked it, and most of it was old stuff. Yeah. I'm like, oh, really? No, and it didn't affect the machine when you took it out? No. Oh. No. Nope. Matter of fact, I cleaned out stuff that I didn't even, I mean, it, 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 and sometimes it was the same project and it was doubled over, tripled over. So it made a, it made a cache of one video and then a remade another cache of that video, same exact video. Cause I went and looked at what it was. It's like, holy crap. That's so, just ridiculous. Yes. So, but anyway, so that's the stuff that you got to pay attention to. You definitely, you definitely got to pay attention to, uh, your hard drive space, if things are acting weird, um, look into the, you know, the different products you use. Right. Sometimes the, you know, developers, they don't, um, you know, they don't think about those things. And uh, Hey, Rob, on the desktop over there, can you tell me what that what that app was that I downloaded? It's on the main hard. You have to, you have to minus down vMix real quick and pull it back up, but it's on there. Maybe you can tell me. I'll, I'll let you know what I downloaded. Um, but it was good, but it, it, it showed me all the hidden files. Yes, yeah. And then you have to go in there and tell it to tell the machine, uh, uh, um, show me all the hidden file folders. And all of a sudden, boom, there it was. So we cleaned it all up. Tree size. 
Tree size? Tree size. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was pretty cool. It was a free download. Um, and as soon as once I was done with it, you know, once I know I don't use it again, I'm just going to save the EXE file. Yeah. And then I'm going to uninstall it. Okay. And I'll keep the EXE off, offline until I need it again, and then I'll reopen it back up and go, okay. But now that I know that, that's what happened. That's kind of, you know. Yeah, so, uh, it was uh, Steam, like I said, the same situation. They had a, yeah, that's what I heard. And it cleans up uh, It's a, cleans up the leftover files um, that Steam leaves in there. Which is a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's, and then you wonder why your machine's not working right. Yeah, and it's not like, you know, just because you installed, installed a game, for instance, and you, you don't like it anymore, you know, and you click on install, I would expect it to uninstall all the way. You would think, <laughs> right? So, okay, so I had some emails. We're going to jump over some video now. If you'll notice in the front of us, on the front, maybe Rob can get a wide picture of all this stuff. Um, this is this is a, some of the, the cameras that, now everything there is literally you can go to Best Buy and get. Everything there. You know, it's a little Canon EOS five. We don't do we don't do we don't do DSLRs, but mm -hmm. when, but I have one in house for pictures and maybe some B roll footage. A little, and then a little video uh, JVC and this is a GoPro four hero or something like that. Then there's my iPad and then there's an old iPhone. Right. So I've got these out here. And now Rob's got a picture of the cameras that we use in house. I was going to bring one. I was going to put one out here, but I'm like, I can't do that because if I do that, I can't, I can't make shots. So yeah. Rob will show a picture. Of, actually, there's there's our camera. That's what we use in studio, right? That's the EX3. Um, love them. Been using them for a long time. I know there's newer models out there, but I'm telling you right now, these are Cine Altas, and they're just little badasses. Wow. So, okay. So people are like, what makes the difference between, you know, because they keep me hearing me complain about DSLR, DSLR, DSLR. Can you reach over there and hand me that one right there? So then Rob will, Rob will come to me. Now, this is just a plain little EOS Rebel T5, right? It's not a bad camera. Um, for, you know, it's, it's a good starter camera. It's right. not, if, if you were going to do professional video, this is not what you would use. You'd go out and get one of the big boys, like the eights, and you know, actually, yeah. There's a whole bunch. I, I don't even know the names of them because I don't use them, mm -hmm. right? But we have these. Well, these, even the professional version of these, the big boys, can only go for 15, 20 minutes without overheating. Wow. See, so we don't use these because of everything we do is kind of like a live feed. We're not, we, we don't do a bunch of um, short feeds and stuff like that. It's just not what we do. Um, we can, but I have cameras for that. So that's the reason I don't use those DSLRs is because they they, they, they overheat and um, the pictures are good. Right. Right. The sensors are good in them. I just don't use them. And then you got the little, um, I think the little JVC down there. I think that's a little JVC. Um, we have these as, yeah, little HDs. Now, the sensors are small. Mm -hmm. They're third inch, typically one chip. They're okay for doing family videos and stuff like that. And they'll last. Those right there, you can leave those things on for days. Wow. And it won't hurt them. They're, they're, they, just, they just keep going. Um, they're built to be bulletproof because it's for, the, it's for the typical consumer to go down to Best Buy, buy, and go out. They're not waterproof. You know? But I've, I've, had, I've had one of those on. I left that thing on for two weeks straight just to see how long it would go until it burned out. I had it plugged into the power. Right. Eh. Eh. Only well, thing you have to worry about when you do that is you have to worry about burn in, right. which will on the sensors will happen. So um, good little camera. That's good for home stuff. Now the DSLR, if you want to go out and buy one of those, like those T5s that I have right there or the T5i, um, they're good. I'm not saying don't go get one and do some video with it. I'm not. That's, you know, if, if that's what you, if you're not doing stuff that's for long term, mm -hmm. you know, like you're going to sit there and let it stay active for two hours, three hours, they're, they're, that's not what they're made for. Okay. But they are, they're okay with going in. You can, you can use those for taking pictures, just like the old JVC and, you know, taking some video. I mean, they, the video's pretty. It's just not depth of color of what we want. So then you go the little uh, GoPros down there. The little GoPros are good for um, going out and 
doing action shots, getting in the water with, having some fun with. You can literally toss the thing around, which I've done. You know, I've literally started recording and just threw it to see what the tumbling <laughs> action you get. It's it's kind of cool, right? You know, so um, though, but those are those are uh, good for action, sporty stuff like that. Like when it so so that very that very GoPro right there, yeah, and sat on the front of my truck during the storms. <laughs> I put the I put the mount out there, yeah. I, just like it is right there. It's waterproof the way it is, right? Um, and when I would go and do storm chase, or I'd go and do you know, especially around here where it floods, we would go in and we right, get the right. water. That goes in the front of my truck, so I can record all that stuff, and I can start and stop or record from my phone. That's great. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of cool, and I can see the shot. And if the shot doesn't look good, then you know, then I get out and adjust it until I like the shot. You should have had that thing up there in, uh, on Spring Hill Drive uh, Saturday in the rain came. I heard it was. It just... was it. I I kid you not. I there was cars stalled in the road. Well, why would they drive through that? And they're not could, freaking four wheel drives. You could not cross. There is no drainage on Spring Hill Drive. Oh, you're right. There's not. There's not a single drain system on that road. And because of the way it goes up and down in different yep. hills, um, on the low spots, it, it it's just, I mean, literal lakes. I feel so bad for the people that live along that mm -hmm. road um, because— Are you talking about Spring Hill Road up off of County Line Road or past County Line Road? Yeah, just past County Line on yeah. Spring Hill Drive itself. Yeah, yep. it's it's just it's just horrible. Crazy. I mean, it, you. I remember uh, when a tropical storm had come through. Right. Um, that, that road was impassable, and we ended up— um, I ended up having to follow— uh, behind a fire truck that was trying to get through the oh areas, my. and I followed him through the back back roads around these gigantic around, puddles. Around the just floods, to, yeah, jeez, and, and it's horrible. Very so horrible. okay, so that's the kind of stuff that that's that the would, stuff that John that's that's, still that's like. the stuff that you use stuff <laughs> like that for, or, or surfing, or yeah. in the pool, or you know whatever. So uh, the next I have there is an iPad. You can actually some of the newer iPads. Now, I used to do this with the older iPads, and the video sucks. Oh, okay. I'm just saying. I, it just, it's not, you know, to me, some people I'm like, oh, I used it, and I was just fine. I loved mine, blah, blah, blah. I did not. So I didn't, you know. But the newer iPad, that iPad right there, that's a iPad 2 mini, I think. Okay. Um, and the video, if it's not bad, it's not, and that's not great, but it's, it's not bad, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then, like, the little iPhone there. This little iPhone here, I I keep these iPhones around and I turn them into iPods. Oh, okay, yeah. I just put I just put video on or put put audio on or something like that. Or I'll use those as a backup camera just in case. You know, the the, the pictures are not good, the videos are not great, but it can be used that way. Right. Right. So um, I know one guy that gets them and turns them in and keeps them plugged in all the time with uh, you know puts it into Never and uses them as uh, uh, as, as um, security cameras. Oh, that's a cool idea. Because you know you can you can you know you turn them into an iPod, so you still have your free, um, you still your you know you can still use them with Wi-Fi and stuff like right, that. Right. Well, he uses stuff like um, he has YouTube accounts mm -hmm. that they're private only for him, and he leaves them on and he streams to YouTube and they never turn off. That is a cool idea. Not a bad idea, right? Yeah. I mean, you're going to burn through some serious. You know, recording space, but whatever. Hey, I mean, that's if you just have it on live and it's just uploaded. Yeah, exactly, YouTube, exactly. That's great. That's a good idea, right? So yeah, there's a, a there's a now that doesn't mean they're going to call nine one one and blah blah blah, yeah. but at least you can see what's going on, right? Yes, you heard it here, folks. You can yeah. live stream to YouTube and watch it on your own. On your account. own, yeah, yeah. I mean, just have your own private accounts. So, um, and then it comes down to, um, you know, my iPhone. Yeah. Now this is an iPhone ten. This is an X, right? Oh. And I'll tell you right now, the video on here is awesome. Yes, yes. I mean, awesome. So this phone goes into this rig right over here, right? And this rig right here, I think I, I, I think I was telling everybody. We, um, so we're going to, my wife and I, my wife is a uh, mortgage professional. Has okay. been for almost 38 years, I think it is. Um so we're going to take this rig here, not on the stand. That stand is just on the stand because it's on the stand. It's this right here. Um, and we're going to go and we're going to do live streams from her realtor's houses to show off the houses. I mean, to me, that's pretty dang cool. 
That is cool. You know, you go in and, and you know you talk to the realtor. The realtor gets to put it out there. We put it out on our on our uh, on our Facebook page, and then they can go like the video and share it to theirs. And the good thing about that right there is now they're able, now their realtors can get their information out across the world. Right, right. So if you if like say you got a realtor that's that deals with international, mm -hmm. they can send them a video. Hey, this is a house I got. Those guys typically when you're international, those guys are just buyers. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we'll send you the, we'll wire the money. We're done. We like the house. They don't. They a lot of them buy the houses sight unseen for cash. So it is what it is. <laughs> but so. Yeah, you can use your, you know, your iPhones, the, especially the newer iPhones and the new and the new Samsungs and new, right, right. You know, like the uh, the only thing is uh, the new ten, the something ten, LG ten or whatever oh, okay, it is. Yeah. That's a I've seen the I've seen the camera work on that. That's pretty good. My son and uh, Michael have uh, the new Razer twos mm -hmm. uh, from the not not the old Razers, the old flip phone <laughs> Razers, but the Razer two. That's actually a, a game. It's the from the gaming company Razer Gaming. Okay. And um, their video is pretty damn good too. So you know, pixels, the whole, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter because everything now shoots. Um, I love how they tell you it shoots 4K, but if you go in and once you download the video, if you really look at it, it's 2K at best. It is. Oh, well, I mean, you know. which is you know, at least you don't have to go out and buy a camera system no, to, exactly. to be able to experience the exactly. So it, it's so that's 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 what I would use. So. You know, every camera on here can be gone and bought at Best Buy or Walmart or Target or, um, I guess H H Greg. I've never been to an H H Greg. To be honest, with you, I've never been in. I've never, I've never foot set foot in an H H Greg. That's why they're uh, out of business. Oh, see, they're not even open anymore. Robin's telling me in my ear. Um, so yeah, <laughs> you can you can. Um, these are stuff that you get now. If you bring up our camera again, Rob, the reason we use these. Is because they are a three chip, half inch. This has got see that lens is that's a TV quality lens. In other words, when you shoot on this, you're ready. You can go right to television. You don't have to up res it. You don't have to fix it. It's it's what um, a lot of a lot of news stations around here in Tampa they use this camper. And um, there's another camera. It's got a full setup. It's got a real rig on it. It's got a uh, um, battery packs in the back. Yes. It's got just cooler stuff on there. They put red tape on it to make it look fancy. Yeah. Well, they have to mark out where you put your eye and stuff, you know. Well, <laughs> ours had that too. Yeah, exactly. I guess you're not. People aren't smart. And go okay. Look into the red ring, and then it's got a, it's got a center box on it, which is kind of nice. Sometimes that's overkill, but they took their they took the center box off. They took the natural box off and put a center. Okay, anyway, it's a good camera. Mm -hmm. uh, love I love these cameras. They're they're, they're kind of bulletproof. But they are made, they're made um, for professional work. Discovery uses them. I don't if you go and look on the Discovery or the BBC Discovery and all those kind of guys. Right. If you're you if, if if you're trying to shoot for their world, they give you the cameras they prefer you to shoot on, and this is highly ranked on one of their machines. Oh, wow. You don't got to go out and buy a red. I mean, if you want a red and if you got the money for a red, that's great. Go buy a red. But that's overkill. Uh, and do not shoot 24 frames a second. I'm just telling you. If you're going to TV, it's 30p or 60p. That's it. Or 29.97, 59.94. But that's so that's the difference between all the cameras. You know, we would never use these for broadcast. Right, right. You know, I use this in a pinch for broadcast, mm -hmm. but it's not made for broadcast. So um, these are more more for like uploading to different. Uh, yeah, websites YouTube and, and Facebook and. Um, stuff like that. It's, uh, it's really, you know, it's great for home movies and, and stuff like that. So just, just saying, you know, um, that Razer phone uh, looks kind of pretty. Oh, pretty that cool. Razer phone, dude, that, that's uh, a cool looking little phone. Yeah, it was pretty cool, man. I have to, I have to say that it, it wasn't, um, I wouldn't jump over to it cause they both have problems with their phones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As much as I would like to say, yeah, yeah, it's, you know, jump over. I like Razer. I like Razer a lot. I think they're an awesome gaming company. They, they make killer keyboards and yeah. And some of their actually some of their gaming PCs are probably, in my opinion, some of the best on the market. But I don't know. It's just uh, hey. Um, so let's talk about iOS 13. 
iOS 13, yes. I've, you uh, updated it to it, didn't you? Yes, I'm beta testing it now. So what I, are you thinking on? On Tuesday, right after our uh, after our Monday shoot. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, that evening um, is when I was able to to install it. Okay. So, and uh, I've been using it. So, far, I mean, right now it's it's real buggy, so I wouldn't recommend anybody, you know, if you do decide to go on the beta program, don't put it in yet. Um, there's a lot of crashing and stuff between apps because they're just not, you know, set up to work with it yet. So how do you like dark mode? Dark mode, it it's okay. I mean, to me, it's just changing colors, but it does it does give a pop to the um, to the background on uh, when you're in the regular uh, uh, skin of it. Let me see if I can get it up here for you. Um, I will say that though, for the most part, right. um, there is some pretty pretty big changes. Uh, I, there is a, definitely a big change in the way the photo app is uh, um, handled and the way it displays your photos. I do know that um, there is uh, changes in the text messaging. Uh, now they have the emojis that you can custom make your own emoji for yourself um, and change the hair, skin color, the look. Well, I can already do that with Bitmoji. Well, they've – and you know what? Not for nothing, but as you see these companies come into the marketplace on Apple and Apple sees them and sees how many people like – all of a sudden, you see an integration into their operating system of these high-featured, you know, applications like right. the emoji, for instance. So we can now swipe with our keyboard on the iPhone. So if you want to write a word without lifting your finger off of the keyboard, you just swipe over to the different letters, like they've been able to do on Android for quite quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> And you can literally spell out, and it works really well. I was very, very surprised at how quickly um, it was able to uh, to work. Um, yes, here, display. So here's, I don't know if you want to see if we can get it up on there. Rob can get it. Can you see that? We're on light mode right now. Oh, yeah, we won't better get to that. Uh, well, I can show you. That's dark mode, John. Oh, here. Well, yeah, we got it up there. Yes. Same thing. So so uh, basically they're adding black? Yeah, yeah. I can um, do that already. Like behind, like when you get the notifications that come up, they're, they're more, um, I don't think it really does that much to the background on the first screen because it looks exactly the same on mine. Well, see, here's the thing. So I have, see if I can clear my phone out. Well, bring up something that you would. Uh, so use. this right here is, is that's my phone. Okay, I'm already in dark. Mode. You're already. <laughs> I'm using dark. Bring, mode. bring up See? An, bring up an app that you would normally uh, you like you yeah, messaging or something. Okay. So let's see. Let's do. Okay, so there's there's my messenger. All right, there's my messenger. All right, can you can you use the robotic and zoom in on that if you can, Rob? So that's it. Does it just add in a black background? It'll take him a little bit. He has to drive the camera. All right, so. Oh, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. There you go. Okay, so it's just a black background. I don't get it. <laughs> well, we like it. <laughs> well, you know, here's the thing, though. Um, when you're when you're getting uh, the older we get, the older we get, the more light um, we need to uh, see. Yes. But that contrast behind it, I have a, um, we have clients that are, um, that are hard, you know, hard, have trouble seeing and are legally blind. And uh, for instance, he requires that his background be on high contrast, which means that his You're complete, burn your phone out. Yeah, his whole computer has to be completely black with all colors on, um, you know, their, their the colors changed on the background outlines. So he can see light. But he can only see it if he sees regular light. It's washed out, and it, it, he can't see anything on right. the screen. But if you have a back a black background with the light along the outside, then he can see. Rusty says hi. Hi, Rusty. He's jumping on another flight. He's going to Detroit. I told him oh. friends don't let friends go to Detroit. <laughs> Geez, Rusty, he's been all over the place. He's literally been. But anyway, all you over. were saying. I'm, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I ruined your train of thought. 
Oh, my train of thought. Choo choo. Now, um, anyways, the he he can see like the outline. So, for instance, you know, we went to um, went to a certain. He likes the a blank blank dot org mm -hmm. uh, on his homepage because he's got a screen reader that reads everything to him. Right. If he has micro. If he has MSN, oh, forget about it. The screen reader. He opens up the internet and it's a. Forget it just, about it, it. It just goes ham on there. You know, it was telling him about Winter Olympics and everything else. He just like I don't care about it. So, um, needless to say, he can see the white, and it just washes everything out. But if we change the uh, background to complete black and just had the outline, he's able to see the outline of the web browser, for instance. Okay. And because the co those colors are what show, show through, he doesn't have that clashing and stuff, and he doesn't right. have that wa white washout. Right. So, that's, okay. may maybe there's maybe a... That maybe that is a good, good thing for him. iPad, iPad OS is iOS 13 for the iPad now is not called iOS 13. It's called iPad OS. Why? Um, Why is it not the same thing? Well, it, it's iOS 13, but what they've done is now have created a whole operating system for the iPads. So now I can you can use a mouse on the iPad. What? You can sync. And believe it or not, Bluetooth? IPad, yes, but I've never, or you can even, um, I believe you can even hook up, yes, you can you hook up uh, uh, through the lightning port, USB oh, okay. mouse through it too, if you'd like. Yeah. I didn't know they had one. Yeah. The, well, they have the, the USB to lightning. Oh, okay. That, then you just plug in a regular mouse. Got it. They okay. gave They gave it support. Believe it or not, supposedly that was already been in the iPad ever since under accessibility. Really? For people with disabilities. Oh, So they got it. gave, all they had to do was say, well, let's let everybody else use it too. And now we have mouse support. <laughs> Yay! So it, it, it's it's cool. They, they they're I'm not very happy with a lot of changes in the iPad. Um, it does make it a little more difficult to utilize. Um, like for instance, if I try to come up with the notifications that you would swipe over to the left and you would come up with just the notifications. Right. That doesn't fill the screen anymore. Now it comes over as just a little sidebar. Oh, okay. Um, now you can. It's a lot easier to have dual applications open at the same time, and overlay, and do multitasking on an iPad. That seems to flow a little bit better. So now is this? So all is this for all the iPads now? Like, say, if I have older iPads and I want to go to this new OS, it's well. First of all, it's going to dog it because it wasn't. It built. is going to dog it. Yes. Right. Um, I have an iPad Pro, um, the twelve. Uh, 9.7, um, but it is it, it will dog your older iPads, um, but a lot of the features that you know would be used in one might not come over to the older ones. Okay. So it just really so, it's really dependent upon the hardware and the machine. Okay, so the the the, the Lag 12 and all that kind of stuff was that was basically an OS for everything: phones, iPads, right, iPods, and now do you think the the iPad version is going to be a is it going to be a stripped down version or is it going to no, be no it's going to have the or same. it's going to get rid of the stuff that you don't need on an ipad yeah it's so going to it give could you potentially make your ipad a little bit faster a little faster and it's going to give you things that you don't you wouldn't be able to do on such a small screen on a phone right uh it'll give you extra usability oh that's good well so, in a way that's good it is it is it's trying to give you that feel of uh being able to use it more as a, a pc or everyday business device okay uh instead of just a glorified internet connected you know internet reader so i think they're just trying to be more like toward game push towards the microsoft surface type feel you know give that kind of entry level type feel to the ipad right um something that it could have done all this time um, obviously, they are pretty powerful machines, so God. they just didn't utilize it in, in the proper way. That's called lazy. <laughs> La lazy. I think they just wanted everybody to have to go towards the, the laptop. Go towards the light. Go towards the light. Go towards the MacBook. Don't go to the light, man. You know every device you buy from us is a minimum of $1,000. Oh, jeez. You must own five. <laughs> so do you um, – I know you I know you are – I wish I wish our um, – our uh, our web guru is here yes. because I have the the question I got the other day is is um someone said that there's a function in the Google on your phones that you can turn the Google tracking off. I don't believe it. I just don't. To me, that I don't. I think once you have it on your phone, you're tracked. 
track to track. I think I think that any developer can give you a fancy button that does absolutely nothing, right? And make you feel secure. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's just. It's not going to happen. It's I'm so sorry. sneaky. Yes, we've turned off tracking on your computer. Yeah, we don't know that you're sitting in Starbucks right did now you... having your second cup of coffee and your third biscotti. Did you... <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Fourth biscotti now. So, yeah. They are changing the Mac OS, too, to Mac OS Catalina. Oh, the big boys? Catalina, 10.15. Of course, that'll dog at every machine out there, too. Oh, yes. Because it Be... wasn't. Get ready to upgrade, folks. <laughs> God, it's just. Okay. Did you see that one where uh, Google, I, I think it was Google that was um, uh, one of the medical uh, facilities, a uh, hospital, a uh, university hospital, was sharing patient information with Google? <gasps> That's a complete violation of HIPAA. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. And you. And, you're, what and it, you. And what it was is uh, Google was supposed to be building an a algorithm to be able to track whether or not you were going to be, you know, from... When you went to the doctor and did this and that and that, they were going to kind of predict where you were going in your life. Like, what's your next disease? Okay. So, so. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because that goes back to the, my very, all you people that are sending out for the DNA test, you're idiots. Yes. You need to stop because you know what you're doing. You're giving the government a database of everything that can go wrong with you. Not only everything that can go wrong with you, but you've also signed over your genome Right to the company that you said, "Hey, let's go ahead and you know figure out who we are." Right. You know now they own that that data sequence to go ahead and say, "Hey, let's create another John." Well, twenty years from now. Hey, another John would be good. <laughs> I, I who all out there votes for another John? I guarantee <laughs> you, my wife is screaming at the computer right now. No. No. <laughs> I put that post up the other day. Wouldn't it be just freaking awesome if there was two of me? <laughs> and everybody's like, no! <laughs> or they're laughing hilariously. So, um, yeah. Yeah, you got to be really careful with oh, And those, term, those terms of agreement, it, it's in there. It states that they now own your DNA sequence. Right. They, See, that's they why you'll legal... never, yep, never, never, it'll never happen. None of, nobody in my family will ever go and get a DNA test. Yeah. That's, why? That's odd. I know where I'm from. I've had history. My 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 parents and my grandparents and my great grandparents and my great great grandparents. I don't know my great great. Well, like, I met my great great once. You'll be like, uh, they've they, all they told come, me where I'm from. I'm come, good. They come back and they're like, you're dead to us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I don't. I'm I, I'm good with you know not knowing everything. You know, but the thing of it is, is you know, because because now here's the thing. You now now the government has your DNA. Mm -hmm. Now your insurance company is going to get your DNA. And they can say, oh, hey, by the way, your predictors say that when you turn 70, you're going to have Alzheimer's. Right. Yeah, you're, guess what? We're not going to insure you for that. Exactly. No. no that, well, Google predicted Bitches that Bitches roll the to... dice. <laughs> I'm just saying. Google predicted that you've uh, typed in the, the – you don't know how to spell, and you've typed it in the wrong word too many times. Right. And they've decided that you have dyslexia, and we're not going to insure you. You're an idiot. No, <laughs> you're an idiot. You, know, so, you just don't have to spell. Did you go to school? So yeah, there's a class action suit on that going on. Really? Uh, yeah. So that's pretty that's pretty interesting, you know. And they yeah. said that they were going to collect the data from the university. Oh, and it's been going on since 2009. That's a long time. That is a long so, time. So um, there was a you know data sharing uh, contract with Google, but holy crap! They uh, supposedly they were scrubbing the patient data name, you know, from the file. So technically, they weren't capturing that patient's information oh that's but, crap you know that's crap i know that's crap. you're ready for this one that they did say is in the lawsuit they may have went ahead and scrubbed the patient data but if somebody has an android phone or google services turned on and they visited that doctor that hospital right on such and such a date right right then you put two and two together here's a patient file that came in on that time at such and such a date, we have an Android user here at such and such a date. Well, there you go. You put them together, you got a patient file. Right. So technically, there's no way to scrub it. Yeah. Nope. So they just messed up big they time. They just it. messed up huge. Yep. And then AM, you see where AMD was supposedly being accused of sharing um, processor information with Chinese government. No. Or with a Chinese entity. And obviously, you know, they're Chinese as 
it, they're communist countries. So stay away from away. AMD. I don't know. I know so, you like them. I like them, but you know this is uh, this is kind of worrisome. So I, I it kind of it kind of flashed up in the tech news and, and kind of fizzled away. It's still there right now. Right. But um, you know they they've claimed that they have not done anything. You know, full transparency. They haven't done anything outside of what they normally would right. with any kind of entity. So they're not. You know, they're not saying they did anything wrong. Um, but that's something to watch out for um, Good as Lord. as it progresses. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, we're gonna make a little announcement real quick. Uh, we got about two minutes left. Um, so July 20th, right? July. July 20th, we are having in this studio from 10 to 12, and we can go a little bit longer if we have to. Uh, we are going to do a fear of the red light class. Not only we're gonna we're gonna try to teach you how to quickly. This is not a long-term class. This is just two hours, so we got a lot to cover. And maybe we may go a little bit longer if, if the people want. We're going to teach people how to not be afraid of the camera, not to be out afraid to be able to talk in front of people, and how to use video correctly. Oh, that's nice. We'll, you know, we're going to show people YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and IG. Now, Instagram, there's these, there's these things where they tell you that Instagram, you can't put anything up past uh 30 or 12, uh, 15 minutes. But I've, other, I've had other people that ha I actually, I personally have been able to look to an hour. Okay. On Instagram TV, IGTV. Wow. Um, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we were going to show people how to use their, how much? How to, uh, how to use this, uh, you know, content properly. Mm -hmm. So if you need us, Email us, techshamans at webeamtv.com. Yes, give us contact. And uh, if you're looking for another show, hey, if you want to do a show like this or you want to do your own show or, or not like text, but I mean just show, uh, again, email me at techshamans at webeamtv.com. We're always looking for new shows. And um, unfortunately, we have lost our CBD show. They have taken a little bit of time off, and we need to refill that. So if you have a CBD, CBD product out there and you want to get out to see everybody, Contact me at techshamans at webeamtv. And if you have tech questions, email us at techshamans at webeamtv.com. And we will see you guys next Monday. Happy 4th of July. Show you really man yeah it's far out and technical and stuff awesome yeah come on come on and turn it on tune into the tech shamans come on come on and turn it on tune into the tech shamans come on come on and turn it on tune into the tech shamans come on come on and turn it on tune into the tech shamans cool